But today we are talking about the conversions of audio. Um, it's such a fun topic, so timely as we are all kind of looking towards 2022 into what's coming and what we're doing, uh, how we're going to be planning, what we're going to be doing for advertising. Brands that are out there are looking at audio and trying to figure out a strategy. Local companies, national companies, agencies, everybody's looking at audio in a slightly different way going into 2022. So we got this panel together for everybody to really start peeling back the layers of the onion and understand what's available now and what's going to be available in the future. What are consumers expecting? It's going to be a really, really fun conversation. So thank you all for joining. On our panel today, we have um, Larry Todd. Larry Todd comes from Leeds RX, which is the leading company in analytics, end-to-end -end analytics and reporting and attribution. More on the attribution side, right, Larry? I probably mixed up the analytics and attribution for you, but yeah, multi-touch attribution and customer journey analytics. It's all, they, it's all you know, helpful, useful. They're they're the ones that help you know exactly what you're doing and what's performing the best for you. Uh, Kate is with us from AdsWiz. AdsWiz is one of the largest uh, leaders in digital advertising. They do everything on their platform from a self-serve audio experience for advertisers to an audio DSP, audio SSP. She'll go into a lot of detail on what they do as we go through here. There's just too much to cover in a, in a short intro there. But Kate, thank you for joining us today. Lastly, we have Jamie from Salem. Salem is one of the largest radio broadcasters out there. 99 stations with over 3,000 affiliates under their umbrella, uh, plus internet, uh, plus, 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 right? The list keeps going on and on. So Jamie from Salem, thank you for joining us today as well. Thank you. So guys, as we look back, um, you know, we were laughing about boom boxes and tape decks, and that really takes us way back in the day. Uh, but it's hard to imagine that the iPod, the thing that started this whole digital revolution of audio, is almost 20 years old today, uh, almost 21 years old as we go into next year. And yet, you know, podcasts are having this new resurgence 20 years after the invention of the initial technology that allowed the, that kind of medium to be distributed. We're at a strange place, right? Coming out of COVID, we've seen a lot of transition, a lot of people ingesting audio in different ways than they have historically. Uh, people spent less time in their cars so that was a main place where they were getting a lot of their audio and they're shifting and they're changing their behaviors uh, and they're looking at different ways of consuming that and different audio mediums are available to them. So as we get into this, wanted to start off with kind of, uh, you know, the state of consumers, right? What are consumers, how are they engaging with audio in different ways today, right? We talked about the tape decks. I haven't seen a tape deck in, in forever or mixtapes for that matter, right? As Kate was alluding to. Um, <laughs> but Jamie, with local businesses as kind of one of your key focuses and, and local communities, how are you seeing people engage with audio differently today than maybe they did 10 years ago? Yeah, Kevin, I, I think it's, it's a great story to be told if told from the angle of there's more people consuming audio than ever before. That's great. Uh, the challenge is they're not all listening on the radio. Much like when I was in the newspaper business, I used to say more people are reading the paper, they're just doing it in different ways. <laughs> so what's happening is, you know, with time shifted lift, listening and putting more of the controls in the consumer's hands, consumers now have the ability to determine what they want to hear, when they want to hear it, how they want to hear it. You know, so I believe the, the flying cars will have radios or will have some way to connect to audio. I just don't know if that will be a, a stream that we're connecting through, if it's an HD connection or how we'll be making that connection. You know, we're already seeing, uh, you know, some cars today built without AM radios and some you have to pay extra to have AM and FM radio. So uh, we don't know where the future will go. The, con the local consumers love radio. Uh, they, they love to hear broadcasts. They love to hear themselves. They love to see themselves. But they're starting to ask more questions about how is this working for me? You know, it's great that I hear myself. It's great that I see myself. But some of those ROI related questions that used to only come from digital advertising have now started to come into the digital form of audio. You know, and that's kind of that transition point that we sit today. It's like, hey, it's great. But what's it's do what is it doing? I'm glad that I'm on this podcast, but who is actually listening? Yeah. What's the demo look like? That's what I want to know. That's what we're starting to see more from consumers. Interesting. 
And that was that was one of the frustrations forever, right? Is what you wanted to listen to when you wanted to listen to it. We historically have been at the mercy of the radio stations to play what we want or give us the content we want. Um, and uh, now we get, you know, the consumers are pulling back some of that control. And that's kind of what you alluded to there, I believe. Kate, are you seeing that control uh, pendulum swinging back to the consumers in, in terms of consumption and, and what they want when they want? Yeah, absolutely. So to give a little context about AdsWiz, I don't know if people have heard of AdsWiz, but where we do digital audio ad tech or digital audio ad tech platform that's been around for about 10 years. Four years ago, we were bought by Pandora and then Sirius XM bought Pandora two years ago. And last year, Sirius XM also bought a couple of podcast companies, Stitcher, it's an ad network and Simplecast, which is a publishing uh, podcast publishing platform. So we're part of this larger kind of conglomerate and have access to a lot of data. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the large podcasters use our tech, New York Times, um, NPR, you know, we're, we're, you know, we have tons of data. So one of the things that we did when you talk about the pandemic, it was interesting, if we kind of remember back to last spring when we were all really in our caves and it was, it was completely different, you know, it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. We, we have about a, oh gosh, it's like 150 billion impressions a, a month. And we pulled log from the data to see what changes were happening and used to see, you know, before the pandemic, there were two bumps, one from seven to nine in the morning and one from, you know, like five to seven of people, right. you know, listening in their cars during commute times, which is kind of expected. And those went away, but then there was a big bump in the morning, like twice as high on smart speakers. So people would get up in the morning, like a half hour later, and they and then we could see the content. It was news and health, right? Which is kind of obvious. And so it, it more, more by way of saying, the reason I'm bringing this up is we kind of, you know, audio is so pervasive. We have smart speakers, we have phones, we have connected TVs, we listen in the car, you know, Sirius is satellite radio, digital radio. And so it's, it's really kind of such a part of our lives. And we continue to see it. We've seen it before, but it is accelerated where, you know, you listen to your workout music, you're listening to podcasts while you're walking the dog, you're listening to relaxing music while you're cooking or news in the car, you know, and so it's just really becoming, even when you're reading, you know, an article on the paper, usually there's a button to listen to it if you want to. So it's really... Yeah kind of becoming, you know, an integral part of our, of our lives. And it seems like the streaming technology, right? Internet bandwidth, if they say, has increased people's ability to consume that kind of medium in different ways, right? So now you're walking and you have better Wi-Fi in your house. Um, you have better Wi-Fi on your phone or connectivity on your phone. And 5G is leading towards more kind of rich media being able to be pushed down to those smartphones for people to do whatever they want or multitask on them. That's right. That's right. Think about when your Wi-Fi goes down in your home. Like, you know, if your internet yeah. goes down, it's like the world has ended, right? So. It's either the best thing in the, in the world ever, or it's <laughs> right. the worst thing in the world ever, yeah. depending on the timing, right? Right, exactly. I can't get on email. Oh, I can finally take a breath. Or <laughs> I can't get on email. My life is coming apart at the seams. Yeah. Larry, from, from your perspective, you know, you guys do more than just attribution on the digital side. You connect the dots across the entire spectrum. So you're seeing consumers act in different ways and convert in different ways also kind of, you know, post-pandemic is we're kind of in the back half of the pandemic. I won't say post-pandemic, probably get canceled for that. But <laughs> you're, you're seeing different, different attributions coming through and different behaviors for consumers. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, possibly how they're engaging with audio as well? Yeah, and, and for those who don't know, quick uh, elevator on Leads RX, we're a, a cross-channel multi-touch attribution provider, really helping marketers understand um, their entire marketing mix. What's working well, what's not working well, what do I do more of, where do I spend more, where do I spend less? And you know, audio is one component of that, certainly. And I think you know, from a consumer behavior standpoint, one of the important things to keep in mind is people are consuming more audio than they ever have before, but that control in the consumer's hands is something that's providing uh, obviously uh, nuance, but then also a lot of opportunity um, from an advertising perspective. And I think a lot of opportunity when it comes to measuring the true impact of audio. Uh, I think that's been a challenge for a long time when we look at terrestrial radio and, and what, what position you know, does audio have in the broader landscape and how do we quantify that? And how do we put some ROI analysis on that? And how do we underscore the importance of it as a medium in the broader mix? And I think, 
um, the changes in consumer behavior, people consuming what they want, when they want to, more control, um, you know, taking a lot of commute away, giving the, the user time to take action when they want to, if they hear something that's of interest to them in a lot more immediate kind of fashion and um, measuring things a little bit more deterministically rather than, than probabilistically. All those things I think bode well um, uh, for audio in the state today. Yeah, it, it must be music to Jamie's ears, right? To have true attribution from, from radio, which has been a diff difficult piece for people to connect the dots on historically. One thing that we're seeing- Double edged sword. <laughs> One thing as we, you know, we've been talking to a lot of different companies and a lot of different uh, customer profiles. One thing that we have, you know, TapClicks has seen is that consumers are a lot more intentional about how they're buying. When they go to the store, they're more intentional. They're, they're making appointments to go into stores or they're calling ahead of time to understand what their experience in the store is going to be, what the inventory levels are going to be, right? There's all these concerns that consumers have um, with what's going to happen in the store. And so they're being a lot more intentional. Um, so it used to be that you could just, you know, it, it was location, 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 right? If you had a retail place and, and you had, you were on the street corner, you would get all the drive-by traffic and that would be your primary way of advertising. But as we've seen consumer shift, there's been more emphasis on how do you advertise to these people who may not be driving by anymore. And I, Jamie, I think you, you brought that up is um, really getting that right mix and, and getting those analytics back and being able to understand what consumers are doing and how that reach is affecting them more so than just a sandwich board on the side of the road or, or a sign flipper, right? Those used to be the primary ways. Advertisers and brands are having to be more intentional and specific. Yeah, and, and so are we as marketers. I mean, we're having to build specific campaigns based around the goals of what our client is looking to do. You know, it's that broad customer journey that we're trying to reach. Salem Media is a broadcast company, but Salem Surround is the digital extension that we use to use all the vehicles at our disposal to wrap that client's journey and influence that customer in every different way that we can. That's what, you know, so in addition to, again, the consumer being in control, you know, that the, the decision points are completely different than they were because that consumer is in control. So we continue to use our megaphone, our broadcast to create awareness. And then we leverage in different digital assets and different things to drive the, for, to collect the people that we've driven, you know, to the internet. Uh, I, I challenge people, what, you know, to come up with a, when, when I say brands, most people think jingles, you know, and, you know, it, it's hard to think about any business uh, or any big brand without awareness you know, but we're in such a conversion driven world. You know, right. So we're having to really balance that and explain the importance of brand, the value of brand and why you can't measure every digital piece the same and audio the same as digital and all the different pieces. But you truly have to surround the target audience because each person is different. Uh, and unless you don't want somebody's money specifically, you, know, you need to have a plan to reach your consumer wherever they are. Sure. It takes us right into the state of advertisers. Thank you for that segue, Jamie. That was perfect. One of the things we're seeing is that, uh, you know, that results-driven advertising and taking that step back and saying, hey, we need a little bit more beyond just buy my product now, right? Buy, 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 buy. That comes in one ear and goes out the other. They need to understand more about the brand. They need to understand kind of some of the philosophies behind the brand. They need a personal experience to feel like they're really connecting with that brand uh, a little bit more. And Jamie, you talked about jingles. Is it still the, the three repetitive, uh, you know, the rule of three, I guess, right? Say your name three times or say the phone number three times. Is that still the rule in, in, for marketers and, and advertisers today? You know, I think there's still a playbook out there that, that says that. I think there's probably a playbook that says it takes many more than three today because of the number of distractions that we have and the, all the different content sources that, that we consume. Uh, to me, it's not about three. It's about the right message to the right person at the right time in their journey. Uh, you know, so uh, I don't know that it's you know, one or three. Definitely, we hear less people branding phone numbers. I think people have started to understand and they get that now that, you know, you really don't brand phone numbers. It's, you know, pushing, pushing websites. Mm -hmm. um, but 
it's still a game of frequency. It will always be a game of frequency. So one of the things that always comes up when we talk about uh, this is reach and frequency, right? That those are the key things that come up for advertisers, for agencies. That's what they want to understand. And, and both you and, and Kate both have phenomenal reach. But at a certain point, that reach becomes inconsequential because my brand is regional or my brand is local. And from an agency perspective, I need to take the horsepower that that Salem or AdsWiz brings to the table, and then I need to apply it on a local level. So yes, you guys reach billions of people around the world. My audience is not billions of people. It's you know Los Angeles or Chicago or something like that. So you guys, and I'm putting words in your mouth, I'll let you answer this in just a, question, in just a second, but you guys have the ability to bring the full weight of the services and everything that you offer on a national level down to a local level as well. So you scale up and down the chain. Kate, maybe you could talk a little bit about kind of that reach going up and down for, for small advertisers and large advertisers on your platform. Wow, great, great setup. I didn't even know you were gonna set me up like that too. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, so we, you know, we have a um, audio ad tech on both sides, buyers and sellers, so an SSP and ad server and ad insertion. But on the buy side, um, because we aggregate so, so many publishers, we've got two buy side platforms. One is called Audio Go and one is called Audiomatic. This Audio Go, the idea is that um, exactly to your point, um, we're, we're trying to make audio kind of to democratize audio. Mm. So anyone can go online, enter their credit card, and then you can choose like your zip code, age, gender, um, even like someone that's, you know, behavioral, like they're they like buying cars or they're into fitness or they, you know, love true crime and, you know, can do podcasts, you know, talk or music and can get very, very targeted on a local level by zip code. Uh, I want to reach women in the zip code 18 to 35 that love fitness or, you know, and, and, and then, you know, you can, it'll say, you know, we've got a little thing that says, uh, no, it's too narrow or it's broader, you know, so we're bringing all the technology together just to make it really easy for anyone to kind of try, you know, using audio. And then we've also got a buying platform that's very sophisticated, you know, thousands of behavioral segments and um, some attribution, uh, you know, uh, uh, capabilities and podcast suggestions and things like that that's in there with, with Audiomatic. So uh, it's it's just, I mean, I still get blown away of the, the capability of the kinds of things that advertisers uh, can do with the technology that they they may not even may not even realize, you know. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And could, Jamie, you guys have you know national reach as well from terrestrial audio standpoint, but you can also hyper target that down to a local level, right? Yeah, we have the benefit of you know the ninety nine stations, a publishing division, and then about a thousand standalone websites and and other different publications. So we've got the ability to take our national audience and then scale it up or down, as you were saying, but then we've got the ability to, you know, sell across our entire platform. So it's not just our audio listeners in this market. It's the people that subscribe to our financial newsletters, if that's what's interesting. It's that entire audience. But then when you take that surround element to it, it's, hey, now that we know who your target audience is and we're reaching as many of those consumers as we can on our platform, we can now extend that by so you can now reach as many of those people as possible. So we're using audio and then you're layering in display and search and all the other different elements to build those multifaceted campaigns again to surround the audience, you know, to help deliver their goals. So Larry, you know, reach and scale is great. Conversion is what a lot of people really want to see at the end of the day. More and more brands we're finding and, and even local retailers local service companies are digitizing themselves. They're educating themselves on what, you know, conversions look like in this new normal. And we're seeing that it's, it's kind of a, a bottoms up demand, right? It used to be that the agencies would push out the reports and now the brands are kind of demanding these reports from the agencies. What is going on here? What is going on there? You guys are able to provide that in a real seamless kind of, at a glance visualization, but still that deeper dive if they need it, right? 
Yeah, you know, look, I, I think for marketers, you know, focusing on the the business outcome that you're looking to drive with your various campaigns is a good place to start. You know, what ultimately are, are, are we looking for more of here? Is it more uh, consumers? Is it more demo signups or trials or purchases of my product or reservations at my restaurant, right? And and dial up or down everything else that delivers you that business outcome and, and start to make decisions based on based on all of that. Um, you know, the, the uh, components that Jamie and, and Kate both talked about give <clears throat> us the ability to target specifically the types of consumers that we're looking to go after, right? Women 18 to 35, low fitness, um, that particular demographic and, and interests, uh, we're able to sort of laser focus our campaigns around that target audience. And this is playing a pivotal role, I think, in the broader landscape of what's going on with advertising today in a digitized sort of uh, environment, right? With the deprecation of third-party cookies and everything like that. Um, there's a lot of uh, restrictions that that folks are coming up against when they're looking to target specific audiences. And, you know, on-air radio talent was kind of the first form of influencer, right? When you think about it. Um, and uh, nowadays we have, you know, the ability to reach a particular segment, a particular demographic um, based on uh, the, the types of programs that we're choosing to um, advertise through or on. It seems like the, the, attribution, um, the multi-channel attribution really helps agencies elevate their game in terms of what they're giving to their customers and helps kind of create some more retention by giving customers brands more than they expected from the agencies. Are you seeing kind of that trend? Absolutely. As well? Absolutely. And, and I think that, um, you know, for a long time, there have been uh, reporting mechanisms around silos, right? Let's talk about how, how your radio is doing. Let's talk about how your TV is doing. Let's talk about how your social campaigns are doing, your, your SEM campaigns. And this would, I think, reinforce what Jamie was talking about earlier when you talk about surrounding your customer to really understand how your target consumers are truly building a relationship with your brand. And that breaks down all the barriers of channels, right? There's the awareness that leads to some sort of measurable action that leads to a business outcome down the road. And very often that will traverse channels, right? Folks will find different ways to engage you along the process. And so, you know, we think it doesn't make all the sense in the world to, to have a siloed measurement approach for a layered marketing, a mix that's, that's obviously cross-channel. Yeah, I mean, if, if last click attribution was the only thing that everybody would use, then there would only be one advertising source everybody would go to, right? <laughs> we all know. Yeah, who you know, and then you're battling against just various sources of, of, of truth and the aggregation and arbitration there um, is time consuming at best and near impossible at worst. Kate, you brought up something interesting, um, and we, we haven't talked about this offline, but um, you talked about what we talked about podcasts at the outset, and then you brought podcasts back again. Is there the opportunity for brands to create their own podcasts and leverage your platform to either monetize that or get more distribution for their podcasts? Yeah, sure. the technology. Oh, sorry. I didn't know if that Go. was <laughs> I, from a measurement perspective, and then, and then I'll, I'll go on. Um, if, absolutely. You know, the technology is there. And I think if you have that megaphone that Salem, or that uh, Jamie was talking about, where you have a, an audience that, that's going to listen to the messaging that, that, you, that you're uh, uh, providing, then absolutely. So we have the, the reporting for it. Kate, can, can your platform help kind of magnify podcasts that brands are putting together? Yeah, there's, there's two different things that we're talking about. One is um, as a publishing platform for brands, you know, to actually create podcasts. So that's what our Simplecast um, platform is where they produce the podcasts. I mean, I think like Netflix, Twitter, um, uh, Barstool Sports, um, a, a lot of the big, we just actually audio chuck, uh, um, uh, crime junkies, you know, uh, New York Times, uh, they're all using the publishing platform, uh, Simplecast publishing platform. Um, but I think brands reaching podcast listeners is like exploding because um, what happens, it's, it's the host read ads, you know, the host read ads, when you have the host endorsing mm -hmm. a brand, the intent to purchase is like over 60%. I mean, it's, it's kind of off the charts and the, our technology, I won't kind of at a high level, there's different ways you can do it. They're not, they can be baked in or dynamically inserted. So the technology enables a host to read an ad, but it's dynamically inserted. So you can still reach your target audience. 
we can sell them programmatically. They don't. They can be sold direct sales, but you, or you can sell them programmatically. And then they can either be host read, or if you listen to like the New York Times or other podcasts, they'll be they'll be announcer read. Um, but it is absolutely um, an area that's just really, um, really exploding in terms of podcast advertising, partly, mainly because of its effectiveness. And it's such a, a way for marketers, or we as marketers and brands to reach the target audience on such a kind of personal and emotional level. Interesting. So taking podcasts is kind of a, a leap off point to our next, uh, you know, our next piece of conversation. Where do you guys, I'll just tee up the question for you guys, you know, where, where do you see the future of this specific media going? We've seen some hints and glimpses of some consolidation, some new media, old media that's now new again, as we talked about with podcasts, right? Um, and different ways that consumers are, are consuming it. So Jamie, maybe I'll start with you and and where do you see, um, you know, kind of the next five years of, of audio? What, what's, what's some of the new things that are on the horizon? Uh, again, it's platforms that we don't know of yet today where there's an opportunity to distribute content. Uh, you know, what's the next Odyssey? What's the next platform like an iHeart or a TuneIn or something like that that we're not aware of? But it's also how do we take this content that is great and get it distributed over other platforms? Mm. And why we launched the Salem Podcast Network. It's why we've launched the Salem News Channel. You know, it's, it's taking the, the content and then repurposing it in all sorts of different ways to reach different consumers who may not listen to this host show, but would, but does enjoy their podcast or would watch them on a news program because of the interview that they have. So it's how do we use all these different things at our disposal to create a great user experience uh, and a great advertiser experience. Uh, as Kate said, embeds or host reads are, you know, number one. I mean, they, they drive great response, uh, you know, but there's also more of a demand starting to come for more dynamic placements. You know, we can say it's great that this host is talking about this, but if the person listening to the show doesn't match my demo, it's less important or less valuable. So in the future, I see more consolidation for sure. Uh, I see more new media. Uh, and cross device is the only is today. Uh, so I mean, we're already in the future uh, when when it comes to audio. We're just it, we just don't know all of it yet. Uh, but I think all of these things here are true and accurate, and more than we even know is true and accurate. And we'll learn what's to come uh, into the future as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think the more consumers control how they consume, the more innovation happens uh, to reach those consumers in new and unique ways. So uh, thanks for sharing that. Kate, what, what do you guys, you, you're on the digital yeah. side, you're surrounding, as Jamie is surrounding, you know, consumers with advertising opportunities, you're surrounding advertisers with distribution opportunities, with the SSP, with the DSP, with everything else that you're doing. How much more can you guys do, right? It seems like the laundry list is pretty long of what you're currently doing. Yeah, well, it is, it, I, I really echo exactly what Jamie was just saying, where I think the, we're in the future today, and it's kind of just going to be, you know, accelerating. So it was a lot of, a lot of. I want to echo that. Um, uh, one of the, like, uh, when we think of cross device, you know, one of the the technologies that we've had for a few years, but I see things like this happening. You know, we call it second screen for marketers and advertisers. It's really kind of retargeting, but it's someone when they listen. Let's say you're on your computer, you're listening to music. Uh, and then you, in the same IP, will serve up a, a display ad, you know, when you're on your phone, you know, an hour later. And we always see like four to five X the engagement in that display ad. And it makes sense, right? Oh, I just heard about that, right? It's just like a, a logical kind of connecting the dots on, you know, what you see and what you hear and kind of across multiple devices and the technology is here today and we'll just get, you know, kind of to do what Jamie was saying, we'll just kind of continue accelerating. In terms of consolidation, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm living that, you know, but we look at, at least in the audio world and the podcast world in the last, even just two years, you know, um, you know, Sirius has, has, you know, bought Pandora, Simplecast, Stitcher, just Audio Chuck with uh, Crime Junkies, Spotify bought Megaphone, uh, Anchor, Gimlet, um, iHeart, Spreaker, Triton Digital, Voxnest. So you're really seeing 
kind of the consolidation happen, at least with us on the digital side, kind of lining up. And then in terms of terrestrial is here to stay, you know, terrestrial is not going to go away. So you'll have both. I think last year, digital for the first time ever was the same as terrestrial. It's kind of been slowly, slowly inching up as a percentage of listening, but, you know, terrestrial will always, I, I don't think it's, it's ever going to you know go away. So. Interesting. Larry, from, from your perspective, you, you see so many different things. I think CTV is one thing that we talk about a lot with agencies, but mm -hmm. predominantly that is directed towards video type of content, right? Getting people from linear you know, TV to kind of digital TV, but the same could work for audio as well. Are you seeing? Yeah, it becomes audio when uh, when you're in the next room and your your kids are are watching the TV and you're just hearing some of the commercials. It, it's it, it's kind of the same effect. But yeah. you know, it's following up uh, non clickable with clickable. You know, giving giving folks a a way to take action on something that has been recently brought up as, as top of mind. So you have them thinking about that. They have the brand awareness. Maybe they didn't write down a little post-it note, right? Maybe they couldn't take action because they're busy cooking dinner, helping the kids with the homework, but they plan to take action a little bit later. And you're really just sort of streamlining that customer journey, putting a, a call to action in front of an interested, you know, intended sort of consumer um, as quick as possible, right? And just really making it easy to unify that customer journey cross device. And here's a question, it's not, you're not the expert on it, but we see so many more connected devices being sold, smart speakers being sold, right? Uh, Bluetooth being used extensively from your phone to another speaker, speaker system. So it seems like the ability for us to take audio with us is increased dramatically, right? The speakers are smaller, the devices are smaller, they're more portable. The batteries last a lot longer, so you could take it to the beach or to the mountains or to the desert or to the lake or wherever you wanted to go. You can have your audio with you wherever you're going. It's no longer relegated to the car or your hi-fi system at home. Really, now it can go anywhere with you. So with the invent of these new technologies, it seems like the consumption is just going to continue to increase on the audio side. Yeah, I think that was one of the first things that Jamie had started with is, you know, let's all remember that people are consuming audio more now than ever, just different and kind of on their own terms. And if you want to be connected, you can be connected. And I was in the middle of uh, Nevada, not anything around to be seen for, for miles and miles. And I had Sirius uh, satellite radio right there in my car with me. I was never not connected to an audio if I wanted to listen, right? And so you always have the ability to download and listen later podcasts and, and everything like that. And so absolutely right um, that it's um, just you know readily available when the consumer wants it awesome yeah the other, the other thing i'd add kevin is you know when each new device comes out it creates new marketing opportunities new ways to tell story new ways to engage with talent you know we've created uh, alexa skills for all of our stations and for all of our hosts that are now sponsorable you know, so if you're looking, if you go and ask, and I won't say their, their names now because they'll start talking, but the devices that are around me, yes. and you ask to hear one of our stations, instead of just getting back, we'll now connect you to so-and-so, you're going to hear the host that's on the air. They're going to be welcoming you to the, to the program. And if there's a sponsor brought to you by so-and-so, you know, so to your point, audio is everywhere and it, it, everywhere that people listen creates opportunities for uh, advertisers to message and for platforms like us to help them tell story. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, the future is going to be very dynamic and looking forward to uh, following up this conversation in another year and see where we are because uh, it's growing so fast. So just as we're bringing it all back around to the reporting part of it, um, we've, we've talked about reach, we've talked about frequency, we've talked about targeting, we've talked about so many of the different aspects of what we're doing. The reporting piece of it, I think, is almost as critical as the reach because people are becoming more sophisticated, advertisers are, in terms of what they're getting back. Being able to be transparent, I think, is one of the trends we're seeing in going into 2022 is more transparency, more of the DSPs are being more transparent about where things are being run. Talk to me a little bit, Kate, about the reporting that you guys have and kind of the level of transparency um, that you have on the platform. Yeah, so um, there's kind of a, think of it, audio, there's a couple of different places. Uh, one is for podcasters. We've got on the Simplecast platform, I mean, all kinds of analytics in terms of who, when, 
you know, in terms of podcast listening. Um, I know on this call, it's a lot of marketers uh, and agencies and advertisers. And so on our platforms, you know, we've got, I mean, it's, it's the reporting is, it's all there, you know, in terms of who, what, when, where. Um, and it, you're, you're absolutely right in terms of moving more towards transparency. That is, uh, that is definitely the the um, the trend, and so we're doing a lot of a lot of things also on the back end to to make it more transparent. Since we work with more publishers in terms of where and who is listening, you know, um, where your ad is being shown in terms of the publishers and that level too. Jamie, are you seeing an increase kind of request slash demand for more reporting or more details for for the advertisers and brands on your platform? We are, you know, local clients have been burned now probably two or three times by somebody. So they're starting to, you know, come to the conversation with better questions. Mm -hmm. And generally it starts with, you know, tell me about reporting. Uh, you know, and we use this platform called TapClix that probably a lot of people on this call have heard about. But TapClix is only as great as the person who's sitting across from the advertiser explaining to them what all the data means. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's that's kind of that that next step of what you know. It's like, hey, it's great that this dial looks this way and the color is this, but does that mean you're getting the right customers coming through your door? Does that mean you're seeing all the right things? So we are we provide reporting you know for all of our different products. We also provide uh, attribution for our terrestrial product, you know, because we want to show the value of. You know, when we have an advertiser telling us they want to cancel linear because it doesn't work, we want to be able to show them how effective it is to show them what their traffic looks like to their website on days that they're not running radio versus the days that they are. You know, so it's more important for advertisers. I'm glad they're asking because it allows us to be storytellers, which is what they really want from us. While they're asking for more reports, they have no idea what to do with them. If you gave them to them, they wouldn't read them. So we're transparent. We show everything we can, but we also understand that if we don't go through the information with the client, we might as well not even report it. Interesting. Larry, the, you know, that reporting is your life on this stuff. Um, so talk a little bit about the multi-touch attribution. It's a big word. It's kind of a scary word for some of the agencies, but Break that word down for us a little bit more um, to, to what that means uh, on a daily basis for people in campaigns. Yeah, at a most basic level, it's just um, trying to understand how consumers are building relationship with your, your brand, because oftentimes that's over multiple interactions, multiple engagements, all the way through some eventual uh, business outcome that you're hoping to get, get more of a conversion event, a new client acquisition event. Um, and that customer journey can traverse devices, right? And I think that um, a lot of people out there are familiar with single touch models, whether that's first touch or last touch. And that really kind of relegates your entire view into a single touch. What was either the first last or last touch uh, that a consumer engaged with? Um, and those customer journeys are, you know, becoming a lot more complex mm. uh, rather than less. Um, and so, you know, let's take a look at the entire customer journey and become storytellers around um, like Jamie said, become storytellers around how consumers are becoming uh, customers. Um, you know, how consumers are build, building a relationship with your, your brand through terrestrial and the various digital, you know, interactions all the way through the, the pot of the gold at the end of the rainbow, right? Which is hopefully a new customer. Um, transparency, I think, plays a, a big role in that, um, you know, and, and using transparency as sort of a a way to become consultative or strategic, I think is what a lot of agencies um, are really benefiting from, right? So bring reporting and analytics as a value added sort of service component saying, hey, we're not hiding anything behind the scenes here. We're using some impartial, right? Um, analy analysis around, around what's going on. So you and I can decide what's best for your business moving forward. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the storytelling aspect, I think is so critical. Jamie, I think you nailed it. Uh, we can look at reports all day long, but if it's not telling the right story or nobody's there to interpret it for us as the brands, um, it, it loses its effectiveness. Uh, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Just as a, as a simple plug at the end, you know, tap clicks for those of you on the call, um, you're probably familiar with it, but really we take all of the data and consolidate all the data for you from all the different sources you as an advertiser or you as a brand are working with. 
We even consolidate multiple different agencies for you. If you're a brand working with multiple agencies, we can combine that data and give you kind of a bottom up view of all of that. Um, so really we've got connectors into almost 4,000 different data sources. So online and offline data can be compared and comp contrast side by side, as Jamie talked about, right? Terrestrial radio with digital radio, with digital advertising, with video, all of that can be combined together to tell that story. And you can visualize all of that through our platform. Um, we've got simple tools that allow you to kind of connect all those data and build those dashboards for, for your brands and consumers. Thank you guys. One of the questions that came up through this as we move into the QA portion, um, we can all like shake out and get all loosey and goosey ready for the QA portion of it, um, is budget. It comes up all the time and it, it was a question that came in. So Kate, on the platform, you guys have self-serve options, you have agency options. What, what is the budget that somebody should expect to spend you know, that's, that's the fear factor that all the agencies have or brands have coming to different platforms is what is it going to cost me to get in? Is it, you know, do I have to mortgage my house or my business to start advertising on the platform? Um, what are the expectations there? Oh, I don't know how to answer that. It really depends on who you are and what you're trying to achieve. You know, sure. and I think what we're trying to do is allow for anyone at any budget you know, to, to get in, whether you are a large national advertiser and audio is a very sophisticated and large element of a national campaign and you need the, the most high-end tools, or if you're just, you know, a local small business or, you know, a, a franchise or, you know, we've got nonprofits and hospitals and insurance agents and all of that looking, you know, you can, you can start for as little as $250 on ours, but it's, it's, it really, I, it's, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. And, uh, and I guess what, what I'm kind of more from where I sit, I think about it's, it, it I'm obviously very biased, but <laughs> audio is Good. such an, an important element of the overall media mix, you know, that's often forgotten. And I think it's what we've talked about today is that it's in our digital world and I'm a marketer. So I do the same thing. I'm looking for my ROI. I'm looking for clicks. I'm looking for um, you know, it, like measurable results. And, and I love the kind of the customer journey and the multi-touch att attribution and, and with terrestrial and awareness that it's, you know, the, the marketing, you know, audio is a part of a marketing mix. It's a kind of rising tide that raises all boats, you know, so. Jamie, you were nodding vehemently with that <laughs> at the beginning part as well. Um, Jamie, there we go. Go. I mean, because because to me, you know, uh, the spend level is is appropriate as as was said, you know, well by Kate. It depends on what the advertiser's goals are. Mm. You know, my I, the way I've always seen my job is my job is to let you know how big of an opportunity there is for you to do what you're telling me you want to do, and then to put the controls in your hands to for you to decide how much of that you want to go after. You know, so yeah. for me, I'm not here to tell you what budget I want you to spend. I'm here to help educate you on what's possible based on what you told me you want to do. And then if I've done my job well, you're going to do the only thing you can do, which is you know, solve your problem and buy as much of the audience as you can. So I don't think there's one simple answer. I think it obviously depends back to, you know, Mr. And Mrs. Advertiser, let me ask you, at the end of 30 days, what are you going to expect it, to be expecting with this and at this investment level? Yeah. And to pile on a little bit, it's, it's easier and more affordable and, and more measurable than you would think. You know, I, I think a lot of people might think like, oh, I don't, I have to produce an ad. Like, will we produce an ad for you within a day? You know, you just write the script, script and then the ad shows up in your account within a day, an audio ad. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's not hard and it is measurable um, and it's effective, you know? So, and it's, it's, so that's kind of the main message as well. That's interesting. That's great. I think that uh, that really it's that conversation, right? It's it's effective, has reach, it has scale. People need to be talking about this. People need to have this as part of their overall media mix. It's not about last touch attribution. There's so much else that goes into that customer journey. I think we forget that as marketers all the time as we start to look at, oh, well, where did this convert? Let's spend more money there. And we forget that ourselves are complex, right? <laughs> when we go to buy something, what do we do and how many touch points does it take for us personally to make a decision on something? 
and all that goes out the window when we start looking at spreadsheets. <laughs> but that is the reality: is we're we're our own worst enemy at, at a certain point when we do that. <clears throat> um, I think that was it. Uh, oh, Kate, you mentioned um, creative asset build. That was another question that came in. So you guys can help people build their assets uh, if they have the script and stuff for that. Um, mm -hmm. talk, talk real briefly about kind of creating the, the assets. Sure. Well, this is in, in uh, within Audio Go, our kind of self-serve platform. Um, when you go in to create your ad, which is a, a create your campaign, sorry, there's a little thing like create my audio ad. You literally type in a script, 75 words, and within a day we have a you know professionally produced audio ad into your account. So, and it's, so you say it's free, but I think we charge $10 for it or something. Okay. Like so we've, we've got that now on the, like on the Sirius XM side, there's also a whole, you know, we have a fantastic uh, creative studio team that also works with higher end advertisers in terms of producing audio ads as well. So again, we try to kind of from the smallest dip your toe in, get started to the, you know, most sophisticated, we, we try to do, you know, have a little bit of something for everybody. And Jamie, do people coming to Salem have to have their own assets or do you guys help develop those as well for agencies or brands? We help develop, we create all digital as well as audio ads, uh, anything that's needed, we can facilitate. Great. So if people are, are not in audio now and want to get into audio, they don't have to spin up a whole other division on voiceovers and all that other kind of stuff. They can come to you guys and you can help them get out of the gate right away. We can accommodate. Awesome, awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much, everybody attending. Thank you so much for attending. Again, we'll have the recording of this out for everybody just after this, uh, but it was such a fantastic conversation. Love to have you guys back and dig into this next year as we see some more changes in the industry, but everyone was fantastic. So Kate, Larry, thank you so much. Jamie, really appreciate your insights as well. Oops, we have one more. Hand raised. Does somebody else have one question on the? I saw a question in the chat that I answered. That someone had said. There was one about uh, Just a minimum spend on Audio Go, and it's two hundred fifty dollars is the minimum spend. But we have Perfect. a promo code that'll give you some money off. And then there's another one. Larry, from yeah, from an attribution standpoint, an old adage: one dollar spent in radio resulted in six for an advertiser. Have you heard of a comparable metric for digital audio? I have not. So um, nope. that's. What no, and yeah, I appreciate the question. It's a good one. But that ultimately comes back to what we were just talking about earlier, which is what are you trying to achieve and what tools are you leveraging, you know, to, to achieve that end goal. So, um, you know, and it's about dialing things and, and fine tuning it as you go. Uh, once you have something to, to kind of work off of to increase your, your return on that spend, but it's different per advertiser and different for marketing mix. It's really not a one size fits all. Perfect. So one more question for Audio Go: um, Will there be a way to show which channels, music formats, and podcasts people are using in 2022? Well, because 2022 is not here quite yet, I wonder if they're saying is that feature going to be available? Um, are there additional Audio Go features that you guys are rolling out in 2022, Kate? Oh, well, we're rolling out all kinds of new features. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. And so feel free to reach out to me and I can um, answer more to try to uh, answer it as best I can right now. Um, if you go and you can create an account for key, for free and, and, and play with it, but you can select, um, you know, music streaming or news and podcasts. And then you can also select, you know, different behavior types, age, zip code, state, DMA, MSA, you know, um uh so oh okay now they have impressions day part listeners oh this is on the on the post campaign reporting broken down by publisher i think that's what you're asking yes i think that's coming i i yeah okay Great. got it yeah yeah that's Perfect. that's coming amy thank uh, you for the question detail, like top top three to five something like that yeah yeah fantastic <laughs> got it Okay. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you all for joining. And uh, we will see you on the next recording. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Bye. Thanks.